The systematic nature of the way you had recorded your offending can be illustrated by reference to one portable hard drive, exhibit KH83, that contained three folders, Necrolord, Register and Deadly. Some of the content could not be accessed. Within the Deadly was a subfolder titled Deadliest. This also contained subfolders. One of the subfolders titled 00 Best Yet contained a further 36 folders. Of these, 27 were titled using a number, then a woman's name, and then a further number. Within these folders, you stored images of you sexually interfering with the corpses of women and girls. It is by looking at such images, comparing the creation dates and other records with the mortuary logbooks and other evidence, that the identities of the 91 named victims were found. It would be wrong to name any victim, and it is unnecessary to do so. Among those you abused were women who had led fulfilling and rich lives. They were the best. One had flown across the Atlantic in a propeller plane via Iceland. Another was a talented skier. One had worked at Bletchley Park during World War II. Many had long and happy marriages. A number worked hard in professions such as teaching or in the NHS, caring for others and looking after the interests of their students, clients and patients. All had families that they nurtured and loved. Some spent the last part of their lives in suffering, whether through disease or old age. But they didn't lose their dignity until you decided to take it from them. Your victims are not all among the dead. They fill this courtroom and other places which are connected to this court by video link. The court has heard of the impact on these families. When members of Kent Police's family engagement team visited to break the news, it was incomprehensible to them. How could their loved ones be so violated in a place which was meant to care for them and keep them in peace? Some have the comfort of faith, others not even that. They describe being heartbroken by the reality of your abhorrent acts. You have sullied and stolen fond memories. There is the inconsolable guilt of not being able to the vulnerable of their own and their families the impossibility of unknowing what they have been told of unseeing the images they have imagined it has shaken their trust their sense of being able to trust the world and trust hospitals some of them have worked to hospitals involved most have not shared the news with anyone but the closest family. Having to keep the secret is another unsought responsibility. They have been able to unburden themselves to this court. They feel that they are mourning their wives, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, daughters and nieces all over again, often many years after their deaths. They have been left in a dark place. They have expressed the outrage and revulsion that the women you abused would have felt at your objectification of them, and they give voice to them. Quite understandably, they express feelings of shame, even though they know they are not the ones at fault. Despite this, they have shone a light into court today by describing in loving words the special people they have lost. They believe the pain is eradicable, that it will never go, and that you have stolen the happy memories they have. 
the court has listened carefully to and read every single word of these statements. If there is any benefit to the transparency of this sentencing hearing, which you have had to come to court and witness, in public their distress, may it be of some comfort to each person who has spoken and written that they've been able to pay tribute to their precious loved ones and given them the dignity of their own memories in life. If it is at all possible, I hope that the end of this sentencing process will strengthen them and allow them to leave you here while they go on with their lives, that they can banish the shadow you have cast, let it go, and return to the good times and the purer memories of the person they knew and lost. There is a settled process by which the court reaches sentence. I must assess the degree of your responsibility, establish the harm caused, and consider aggravating and mitigating features. There is no sentencing guideline for sexual penetration of a corpse or for possessing extreme pornography. The maximum sentence for both offences is two years imprisonment. In my judgment, each of these offences was of high culpability, all of them the highest possible blameworthiness. The offences committed in the mortuaries involved an astonishing breach of trust and invasion of privacy, which was repeated so much that it became habitual. The dead bodies of women were used for your sexual gratification. Each was recorded and some were further manipulated when reduced to di digital images. The mortuary offences were also of the highest category of harm, as the impact statements the court has heard have testified. You have no regard for the dignity of the dead. Women who had recently died were attacked at a time when they were utterly alone and unable to resist or report your exploitation. As you well knew, those who cared for them were mourning their loss at the very time you were abusing them. There are numerous aggravating features obvious in the description of what you did. The location, the repetition, the abuse of position, the utter degradation of those recently living human beings, and in particular, the multiplicity of victims. There is no mitigation. I have seen no evidence of genuine remorse as opposed to hollow regret now that you are under public scrutiny. A number of sentences are to be made concurrent and I've paid careful attention to ensure the sentence overall complies with the totality guideline provided by the Sentencing Council. The law obliges me to allow a quarter reduction for the guilty pleas. Although the sentence I pass now will be concurrent to the whole life order, obviously it cannot be otherwise, it is right to pass separate sentences for each offence so as to acknowledge the offences against each individual woman. Had these offences come before me for sentence individually, each sentence would have been much more severe. Had I been sentencing for these 16 offences on the 15th of December last year, the total sentence for the sexual offending would have been greater than the 12 years imprisonment concurrent to the whole life order. The sentences today must be proportionate to those passed last year because the offending had all been discovered by then but the victims not identified and the offending is all part of the same course of conduct over the same period of time. And who are you, David Fuller? You are 68 years old. In 1973 and 1976, you were convicted of dozens of burglaries committed by climbing into homes through windows. You spent the subsequent years living a lie, the facade of a mild and ordinary life. While in seclusion, you committed revolting and outrageous acts of the deepest darkness. 
You have a family who you deceived over all those years. As I told you last year, the depravity of what you did to, to those you killed and those you defiled after death reveals that your conscience is seared. It's almost impossible to believe that a single man can cause the misery to so many that you have done. But you did it, and in consequence you are paying the price that human justice can exact the rest of your mortal life in prison. I order forfeiture and destruction of the physical evidence of your offending, which has been listed on a schedule consisting of 27 exhibits made up of numerous computer drives, disks and images. On counts 1 to 10, which reflect the sexual penetration of individual women, the sentence is four months' imprisonment on each consecutive. On count 11, which is a collective count for the filming and photographing of the victims in counts 1 to 10, the sentence is four months concurrent. On count 12, a collective count covering the photographing and videoing of victims against whom no penetration can be proved, the sentence is three months concurrent. On counts 13 and 14, which concern sexual penetration of three victims who remain unidentified, the sentence is four months consecutive on each count. On counts 15 and 16, which both concerning photographing and videoing of unidentified victims, the sentence is four months concurrent.